Yeah. What's up, y'all? I'm Terrell Carter, the Carter Crew, and these are my sons. Ben. Cameron Spider-Man. Cameron Spider-Man. Anthony. And this is another installation of DOS Storytime. Tonight, we chose to read The Five O'Clock Band by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. I cannot stress how important it is to read to our kids, especially us fathers. It helps build their vocabulary, it stimulates their imagination, and it boosts their confidence when they're reading in front of others. It also promotes really good listening skills. Uh, tonight we chose the five o'clock band because y'all don't know, we are native New Orleanians, they're not, my wife and I are, you know? So there are a lot of things that we want to teach them about the heritage, the pride, and, and the tradition that the city of New Orleans offers. So this book is, is, is point on, especially car carnival season just passed, and Mardi Gras season just passed. So this one is gonna be a good one tonight for them to read. And remember how it is to actually be outside and attend parades and second lines and things of that nature. But anyway, y'all ready? All right, let's go. Here we go. About to start reading. The Five O'Clock Band by Troy Trombone Shorty Andrews. Everyone's hometown is special. It's the place that helps you grow into the person you'll become. For one little boy called Shorty, his hometown roots were very important. He was from New Orleans. And in this city, there are sounds and tastes and celebrations unlike any other place in the world. Many even call it magical. The city showed Shorty how to see the world and its people helped him become the person he was destined to be. Shorty liked to play music. In fact, he was in a band. They called themselves the Five O'Clock Band because that was the time they started playing every afternoon. After school and homework were finished, the band lived in the lively neighborhood called Treme. Dad, who's Treme? Treme is the neighborhood that they were from, buddy. Who is? See? Okay. We didn't been to Treme before. The five o'clock band would parade through the streets of Treme, down to Jackson Square in the center of town, and back around, just like all the older mus musicians did. They played for the people for rounds of applause, and sometimes they were even given tips. But one day, Shorty was practicing his trombone and got so lost in his own music that he forgot to meet the five o'clock band at their regular time. Uh-oh. Take it over from me, Ben. Shorty ran, <coughs> Shorty ran to Jackson Square, trombone in hand, but his bandmates had already left. He had missed their performance and parade and he knew he had let them down. One day I want to be the band leader, but how can that happen if I can't even get to the show on time, Shorty thought. Shorty walked through the neighborhood, around, around the large square in the French Quarter where, music, where musicians gathered. He smelled delicious gumbo and jambalaya in the air and heard the sounds of other musicians echoing through the streets. But Shorty kept his head down. Not even the sounds of the brass instruments could cheer him up until suddenly he heard a booming voice cry out, Shorty, where at? Where you at? Where you at? That's where you at? Where you at? It's conjunction. Where you at? God bless you. Uh, bless you. God bless uh, you. Just sneeze on the truth. Okay. Sorry, look, looked up to see Tuba Term Tremaine. Tremaine. He was a giant. Hey, he was a giant of a man, but he was as sweet as a pecan pie, mm -hmm. and the sounds that flowed out from. His horn were even tastier. Tumba, Tumba and his band had been playing in the quarter for as long as Shorty could remember. And they played songs that, 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 were, that, that were that were over one hundred years old. 
Where you at? Tuba. Sorry. Called back. Feeling down. Dang, dang. There you go. Looks like you've got the blues, little man. Oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tuba. 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 Treme. Treme. Had notice. Sorry, said face. I missed the five o'clock band, and I don't know where they they've gone. I'm afraid I won't have what it takes to be a girl band leader. If you can't even show up on time. Okay. If I can't show up on time. Good job. Tuba Treme placed his giant horn to his lips. The first notes of When the Saints Go Marching In tickled Shardy's ears. Like so many other New Orleans, Musicians, Shardy had learned how to play his horn with his tune. Pride swelled in Shardy's chest as he and Tuba played the same notes together that Louis Armstrong had played many years before them in the same city streets. I know Louis Armstrong. You do? Who was he? He he was a musician and he played the horn trumpet. Trumpet. There you go. And he's a part of Black History. Yes. And he's in one of the Purple Gold books. Mm hmm Sure is. Tradition. 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 Tuba Treme said, every band leader needs to know where music came from in order to move it forward. If you understand tradition and you keep it alive, you will be a great band leader. Thanks, Tuba, Shardy said as he waved goodbye. He hoped to be able to play just like Tuba Treme one day. Shardy continued walking through the quarter along the banks of the Mississippi River. A steamboat floated alongside him, and the steam whistle sounded. He thought about how many musicians had played on that river, even Louis Armstrong. Shardy blew his horn back to the steamboat and smiled. His growling stomach led him back toward home, but the scent of red beans and rice made him stop in his tracks. Stop. Way at, Shardy? Queen Lola called out the window of her restaurant. Shawnee was still feeling defeated, but no one could refuse a meal from Lola, the Creole queen, one of the best chefs in New Orleans, if not the world. Where you at, Queen Lola? Shawnee <laughs> answered as he opened the door. Queen Lola served him a heaping plate of red beans and rice along with andouille sausage, collard greens, and okra with tomatoes. She Amen. had been making this dish for over 50 years, treating everyone who came through the door like family, even Martin Luther King Jr. As Shardy dug in, he asked Queen Lola a question that was weighing on his heart. I let my band down today, but I want to be a great band leader and make amazing music, just like you make amazing meals in your kitchen every day. How do you do it? Eh? Queen Lola smiled wide. Love, she said. There's love in my food because I love everybody, every dish I make. It's special. It's my special sauce. As long as you love what you do, you will always be a success. I don't love anything more than playing music, but this, but this meal, sir, is close. Thank you, Queen Lola. Let me say. Come by any time, Shorty, she said. Why don't you head back out and see if you can find your band? Shorty felt a little better now that his belly was full, but he knew he had he still had more to learn. As he walked toward Treme looking for his band, he heard the rumbling of drums in the distance. It sounded like glorious thunder. As he turned the corner, he stood face to face with the most majestic person he had ever seen. We are Indians, the chant pierced through the warm, swampy air. It was the chief of the neighborhood Mardi Gras Indian tribes, Big Chief, and his drummers chanted as they pounded out of rhythm. We are Indians, Indians, Indians of the nation, the whole wild creation. Shardy knew the song was a prayer that the Mardi Gras Indians sang before they marched down the street. 
They believed the song would protect them on their journey as they went through the city looking for other tribes. Mardi Gras Indians only exist in New Orleans. They are a special group sacred to the city. Bean? Why yeah, Jordan? Big Chief asked as his group slowed down drumming. Where you at, Big? Hey. Where you at, Big Chief? There you go. Sh Shorty hollered back. You and the tribe sound amazing. I'm actually looking for my group, the Five O'Clock Band, but I need to know. What does it take to be the Big Chief? Big Chief picked up his tambourine and shook it proudly as he looked up to the sky. Dedication, he said. Each year, all the Indians make new suits, hands sewn from, hands sewn from scratch. It takes a lot of time and patience, but when we hit the streets, it's worth it. We are the soul of Mardi Gras. Shorty noticed a bit how Big Chief's suit shimmered in the light. He thought about how important it was for him to practice his craft every day in order to carry the honor of being a band leader. Suddenly, Shorty heard the familiar melody of band in the distance and ran toward it. He knew the sounds. He knew the sounds only come from the five o'clock band, and there were his friends parading down the avenue toward him. Way, way at the five o'clock bands. Sang, way well, yet, yeah, Shorty answered. Hey, Dad, mm -hmm. where's the king cake? Like it's a New Orleans style. I don't know, man. You gotta keep reading the book. It might pop up. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you guys today. I promise I'll never let you down again, Shorty said. But I learned that we are, that we have all the ingredients we need for success. We have dedication. We have honor, or we honor tradition, and most of all, we play with love. Now, I know that it takes to lead. Why don't you start us off and take the lead right now, Shorty? One of the boys said. Shorty raised his horn to his lips, stepped out in the front of the band, and played the opening notes of When the Saints Go Marching In. As the 5 o'clock band paraded home to Treme, they waved at the friends and neighbors who clapped their hands and danced in step behind them. Ooh, that, ooh, that. There you go. That's, that's the end. They got pictures. Look, they got different pictures. Author's notes. So Wait, that looks like the five o'clock band. Yeah, that is the five o'clock band. Wait, that's there the were a few? Mm -hmm. Huh. But that's them older? Well, Dad, look, they have a bunch. I know. Let's see, that's the Tremaine. Dad, can you go back? Dad, mm -hmm. who is that? That's Trombone Shorter. Why is he like the one in the front? Because he, that's the, the, the book is about him. He in. Y'all like the book? Yeah. Y'all like the book? Yeah. All right. It's a really good book to read. Um, another special thing about this book is this is one of my high school classmates. So it's always good to support and um, be able to connect the stories with a lot of things that, that we grew up with and we know directly from being from New Orleans and growing up in that area. But anyway, it was really fun reading tonight. Y'all enjoyed it? Mm-hmm. Y'all enjoyed it? Mm -hmm. Alright, for this installation of DOS Storytime, we are signing off as the Carter Crew. Y'all have a good night.